it's time to find out if we like this better as the reverse flow or if we're gonna like it better as the traditional flow. Welcome back to Comparison Cooking. My name's Kevin and today we are trying to figure out what is better for the Oklahoma Joe Highland reverse flow. They give you two options. One, to go right to reverse flow. The second option is to seal this up and put the exhaust vent right here, making it a traditional Highland. I want to know what the temperature difference is going to be. With the reverse flow, they've been very consistent, but we're going to start from scratch and we're going to do two experiments. The two experiments are going to be with one full charcoal chimney of the Kingsford hardwood briquettes. Uh, I've never used these before, so this is a perfect time to get a feel for how they do one charcoal chimney. Uh, and then I'm going to add one chunk of apple wood just to see how the smoke reacts and how it's coming out of the exhaust vent, just to make sure it looks, if there's any differences that we're seeing. So we're gonna keep it really simple and we're gonna do that. The main thing we're gonna look for is temperature consistency in here. We have our lid thermometer and then I have two thermometers on the grate level. I'm not going to move those at all between the two cooks. I'm gonna keep them right where they are. So we'll see how those do, and then we'll also conclude at the end of the video any other findings during this experiment. As we wait for our charcoal to get going, one of the things I want to point out is number one, probe location is going to tell us, you know, closest to the firebox, furthest away from the firebox. With the reverse flow, you can see the plates in here. The smoke goes underneath, comes back up, comes over, and then comes out this exhaust vent, which is perfectly placed, almost perfectly placed, at the great level. That's where you want your exhaust vent. With the traditional, they put it up here. I don't know why they did that. Uh, it'd be nice if they'd put it right there, you know, halfway, right at that grate level to pull that air right over the meat instead of what happens with the traditional. Sometimes it goes right up top and right out the exhaust vent. You're still getting plenty of smoke on your food, but it's a nicer draw across the protein when it's at grate level. So that's why so far I've been really happy with the reverse flow. Smoke coming underneath, coming up and over, and then coming right back out that exhaust vent. I threw the apple chunk in at the 30 minute mark. So let's check to see how we're doing. Just gonna do a quick check. As you can see that started burning right away. Now I don't wanna leave that open. I wanna keep this running, see how we're doing. It hasn't produced any smoke because it caught just like that. However, it is producing smoke flavor even though I'm not getting any uh, white smoke, which is good because you don't want heavy smoke but we're doing great. I can smell the apple wood. I can smell the scent in the air. And we're gonna see with adding that chunk, how much longer this temperature goes for. As we finish up this first portion, before we jump into the second portion of this experiment, I just wanna mention, uh, got my second round of these gloves, 12 bucks I think I spent on Amazon, highly worth it. Five years ago when I saw these come out, I was like, what a gimmick, what a waste of money. But when you're handling hot metal, wood, they just really come in handy. They are probably one of the best $12 investment I've made. Um, I'm pretty sure they're 12, 15 bucks on Amazon. So 
you might want to check these out. They might give you that protection to make sure you don't get those all those quick burns. That's it. It's been about five, six minutes since I threw the apple chunk on. It was literally 225 here, 225 here just uh, two minutes ago, and 213 here in the back. Uh, temperature's already starting to drop, so that apple chunk only gave us, you know, eight to 10 minutes of pushing up the heat. So you really have to stay on top of these fires. I'm using this just as an experiment for today, but normally you've seen what I would use. They're the mini splits. Uh, check out my latest vid, one of my last videos if you have any questions about what the mini splits are. Uh, but 225 here, 225 here at great level, and 215 is where it was in the back. That's the right amount of uh, consistency I'm looking for. I can live with that. It's not ideal where it's absolutely perfect, but I've had in other smokers where it was 250 here and 190 back here. So this is really close. I can smoke with this all day. Just have to manage the fire. This is what I'm looking for. Let's switch it up and switch it over to the traditional and see how we do. All right, let's break this down. We'll keep the thermometer right where it's supposed to be. So we're gonna put that right here. Here we can put And the way these baffle plates lock in, you gotta go left to right. So we're gonna remove all these. Good excuse to clean them from my last cook. So I'm glad we're doing this experiment now. And now we're gonna load it right back up the way it was. We just have to switch the exhaust vent and we're in business. This is a traditional Highland setup. This is what most people get from the store. The reverse flow is a little harder to find, uh, but when you get the reverse flow option, you can see I just sealed that up. When you get the reverse flow option, it does allow you to go to a traditional setup. Uh, now from everybody, we're all cleaned out, ready for the next round. For everyone I've seen that has the traditional setup, they normally add some type of baffle plate or a grate with tin foil to deflect the heat to help smooth out the temperature throughout the chamber. That, from what I've seen, is a really smart way to smooth out your temperatures. Uh, but we want to see what this looks like without doing that. Um, maybe down the road we'll fool around with that. But for today, I just want to show an illustration of what happens with the base model. So there we go. We are about five minutes away from adding the chunk of applewood. So we have three ten-ish up here right now. Can't see that. We're getting hit with rain. We should it should hold off until we finish this experiment in about 40 minutes, and then I think it's gonna be go time with the rain. But we have 260 here. Like I said, 310 up here, and then 243 back here. So we're definitely getting wide variants in our temperatures on different parts of the smoker. Something to note. All right, we are 55 minutes just under the hour mark, so we're gonna wrap this up so I can empty out the charcoal and throw the cover on before this rain comes. Uh, we're at 225, 197 up front. 185 so a lot more divergence in temperature we're going to go over this information we got a lot of stuff to digest what a fun experiment 
Granted, it did rain on us the last few minutes, but that's okay. We got most of the data points that we want it to, so we can go over them. And like I thought, that reverse flow baffle plates that are in there, that's going to really temper down your temperature throughout the entire cooking chamber. And we saw that big time with the difference between having them in and having them out. So let's go over some of the data points and then I will go over how you want to prepare for cooking in these style smokers that are gonna deal with these type of issues. So as you can see with the regular reverse flow, I should say, the temperature was a lot smoother. You're gonna see a lot less peaks and valleys as the temperature climbed. And that's what led me into the issue I had back in my spatchcock chicken video, which showed that it took a long time to get the temperature to come back. So those reverse flow baffle plates really make it a steady, more of a traditional offset smoker. If you're working with a 500 gallon smoker, it's hard to rise the temperature really quickly. It takes time. So the reverse flow also deals with that, where it's going to make everything take a, a little bit more time than maybe a traditional big box store, Oklahoma Joe, uh, char griller smoker, where if you need to crank up that temperature without those baffle plates, the temperature jumps pretty quickly. So there's a whole smooth line in there. And then at the 30 minute mark, you can see where I added the chunk of apple wood. And with the reverse flow, it climbed up a little bit, but you can see the entire arc of what one hour of one charcoal chimney and one apple chunk did from start to finish. That tells us a lot. We need to be adding more fuel in different increments throughout our cook to make sure we're maintaining temperature. Now, when I removed all the baffle plates and we went with that traditional, no modifications in there, just what you get from the store. Most people, when they go to Home Depot and they come home with an Oklahoma Joe, you can see that the temperature jumped a lot more and that there was a big difference between the lid factory stock thermometer and what it was saying at the grill levels. All right, because there was nothing to damper, nothing to deflect that heat and disperse it throughout the entire chamber better. So the top temperature reader, thermometer, was reading the highest and then at the great levels, there was still a big difference. So that's where I hear a lot from Oklahoma Joe users, I'm at 350, I'm at 375. It's impossible to get this temperature down. They're reading perhaps the top temperature gauge and they might not have probes on the great level. I know a lot of people do, but for me, the light bulb went off, duh, that the traditional style offset, that's why they're seeing such high heats. First, my reverse flow with how I've been cooking it, I've been having trouble getting the heat up because the baffle plates are keeping the temperature down and a little bit more even. So you can see that there's a lot more ups and downs, peaks and valleys in that chart. So you've already seen a hint of how to get better distribution of your heat in this experiment by using baffle plates. But if you don't wanna go out and get those type of baffle plates for your Oklahoma Joe, I did in a recent video that I'm gonna leave right up there, show you a simple backyard hack of how to get better temperature distribution throughout your chamber. If you have a traditional Highland or char griller, one of those type of smokers. Check out that video to help yourself get those better distributions. This is a very versatile smoker because what I'm getting from these data points is when I wanna go low and slow, I wanna use that reverse flow setup. All right. Now, if I didn't have other smokers and I wanted to do spatchcock chicken again at 325 degrees, I would take out the baffle plates and I would go with the traditional model. But I do have other smokers, so instead of going out back and making those adjustments every time I want to cook a different way, I'll just use my other smokers for hot and fast while I'll keep this as a reverse flow for low and slow. So it's just more information for me to make better decisions on how I want to cook my food before time. So when I go to the backyard and I start getting my pit ready, I know what to expect. 
I hope these data points are helping you understand your pit better so you'll be more prepared when you go out and tackle your next smoke. Let me know in the comments below what type of temperature swings you've seen in your offset smokers and any tips and tricks that you've learned throughout the years that might help us all. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Make sure to share it with a friend that is getting into backyard barbecue. And by all means, hit the subscribe button. As always, you guys have been great and I hope you have a great day.